Welcome to this configured terminal presentation. My name is David Bombal, CCIE 11023 and Master ASE. In this video, I'm going to describe the flash memory architecture of HP E series switches. I'm going to show you how to upgrade software versions on a switch, how to manage the installed software versions on a switch, how to manage the configuration files on a switch, how to back up the configuration files, and how to examine and interpret the event log. Once again, this is a practical demonstration, so let's get started. Now let's look at upgrading the software images on a switch. Most E-series switches support two software images in different areas of flash. You have the primary and secondary flash on a switch. So on our 5406, typing the command show flash shows us that we have a primary image and a secondary image. Notice the primary image is version 15, secondary image is version 14. What's great about having a primary and secondary image is that you can upgrade one of the images, let's say the secondary image, boot the switch off the secondary image without affecting the primary image, and if there are problems with the secondary image, you can revert back to the primary image. If the secondary image is fine, you can then upgrade the primary image and work off that new image. You can boot off either the primary image or secondary image. At the moment, you can see on this switch, the default boot is the primary image. You can upgrade the switch by, for instance, using a USB drive through the switch's auxiliary port. But in this example, I'm going to show you how to upgrade the switch using a TFTP server. On my local machine, I'm running a piece of software called 3C Daemon. This software has been around for many years, developed by 3Com. It has a built-in TFTP server, FTP server, syslog server, and TFTP client. This is free software which you can download from the internet been around for many years, it's very stable, works very well. As you can see here, the server has been configured to listen for TFTP requests on IP address 10.0.0.249, port 69, port 69 being the default port for TFTP, and 249 is the IP address of my local machine. So we will upgrade the image of this switch by connecting to a TFTP server. The first thing we need to do, however, is get the software from hp.com. So we're going to connect to the internet, download the software, make it available on the TFTP server, and then we can download it to the switch. So to download software, we need to go to hp.com forward slash networking. We can then go to support, and notice we can do a search using auto search for a specific product series name or number. Now when you telnet to a HPE series switch, notice it gives you the reference information for this product. So copying that, we can paste that in and notice we have the HPE series 5406ZL switch chassis. We can display the selected. And notice if we go to software downloads, we can download software for this product. So as you can see, we are downloading information for this product number. The latest release of software is here. You can see it was built 8 October 2011, posted 1st of November 2011. It's 13.6 meg in size, so let's download the software. We warn that if we're running a version of software earlier than K15, your boot ROM will be updated. All switches must be running a boot ROM version of K12, 17 or newer in order to run the software. Now if we look at our switch, type show flash, you can see that we're already on boot ROM 1511. So that's not going to be a problem. 
The primary image at the moment is 15037. We're going to upgrade to 1568. So let's click on the download link. We have to agree to the terms of the license. Click download. The software is then downloaded. So I'll pause the video and once that's downloaded, I'll show you the next step. As you can see, it's downloading a zip file. So my file has downloaded successfully from hp.com. I've put it in a temp directory. So here's the zip file that I've downloaded. I'll just extract it. So the files have extracted you can see the firmware is a .swi file. HP have also done a good job here. They have provided release notes for the software. So you can read this PDF, which gives you information about this software release, tells you which switches support the software, goes through information like required boot ROM updates, known issues, listing of software fixes, and so forth and so on. So a lot of information available in this document. I'm not going to bore you going through it. So this is the name of our software. I'll just copy that. TFTP server needs to be configured to point to the right directory. So the correct directory is ctemp tftp, so that's correct, so I'll click OK. So the tftp server is listening on this IP address and port number. So on our switch, we can type copy. Notice there are a few options here like tftp, USB, and X modem. USB is once again where you copy an image from a USB drive that's plugged into the auxiliary port on the switch. X modem is where you upgrade the firmware through the console. That can take quite a long time. So we're going to choose the option TFTP. We're going to copy the firmware to Flash. And notice now we need to specify the IP address and other information about the TFTP server. So the IP address is 10.0.0.249. We need to specify the file name which is this and where are we going to copy the firmware to. In our example let's copy it to the secondary flash rather than the primary and we can hit enter. We're told that the secondary iOS image will be deleted. Are we okay with that? And let's say yes. And notice the switch is connected to the TFTP server and is downloading the firmware. You can see the get request for the specific file. You can also see the bytes incrementing on the switch. So we just need to wait for the firmware to download. The file size is 40 meg. So we're not far off that at the moment. You basically just need to wait for this copy to continue. You can see it says done. So it took 63 seconds to copy it down. You can see the switch is validating and writing the system software to the file system. The switch is now finished and we can now type the command show flash. And as you can see here, the secondary image has been upgraded to K1568 which is the version that we downloaded from hp.com. So at the moment it's still using the primary image. So we can type the command boot system flash and now we're going to specify the option secondary because we want to boot the switch off the secondary flash. We're going to say yes. The system is rebooted. You can see my telnet connection is broken. I just need to wait for the switch to reboot and then I'll be able to tell it back to the switch and we'll be able to see and check which version is now being used. 
So now let's try and telnet to the switch. As you can see, we are able to telnet. Typing the command show flash shows me that the secondary flash is what's used for default booting. Typing show ver shows me the image timestamp, shows me the version. So in other words, we are currently using the new version that we upgraded the switch to. You can see that the boot image is secondary. Now best practice would say, upgrade the secondary flash, boot the switch off the secondary flash, as I've done here. Once you're happy with this image, upgrade the primary image and then set the switch to boot off the primary image. The great thing about having two flash areas is that if there is a problem with the new image, you can always revert back to the previous image. 